You may think it's pretty inefficient that we have to type a URL into the browser every time we want to grab some data from last.fm's API. There has to be a more efficient way to do this. And you're right. We can write a simple Python program that uses the JSON and requests libraries to do exactly what we did manually a few moments ago. If we run this program right here, let's look at what it returns. Look, the data that this Python program returned is exactly the same JSON data that you saw in the browser a second ago. This program was less than 10 lines. First, we specify a URL. Then, we simply say request.get that URL and call dot text in order to get the text. We assign that value to data. We print type of data, which we saw was Unicode, and we print data itself, which was the JSON object. But if we go back and look at the JSON object itself, we see that it's in this funky string format that makes it very hard for us to parse out the interesting information. We could write a regex to parse out what we want, but that can get pretty painful really quickly. The JSON library will make interacting with JSON data as easy as one, two, three. Let me show you how. We've modified our script ever so slightly. After initially assigning data, we reassign it. We say data equals json.loads data. What json.loads does is it interprets a string and assumes that it's a JSON object. By doing so, we convert the JSON data into a Python dictionary. We'll see that when we print type data. Once we convert the data into a nicely structured dictionary, we can get the interesting bits out as if we're simply accessing a dictionary, for example, typing data artist. Let's see what this script produces now. As we can see, what we return here is that the type of the object is a dictionary, and then we have a Python dictionary. 